You know purple songs can fly? Welcome to our program, produced by the Children in Treatment at the Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Centers. Our program is about great music made by some terrific young talents. Now, here are the hosts of Purple Songs Can Fly. Hello and welcome to Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice America Kids Network. I'm your host, Zachary Taplin, and this show is actually going to be a little bit different. Uh, my co-hosts, Dominic and Emily are uh, not able to be with us today, unfortunately. And this is actually the last show I'm going to be doing for a little bit as I'm about to go back off into the wonderful wide world of college. Uh, but my, our guest today is uh, Mrs. Pat Gardner, a nurse at Texas Children's Hospital, where we're also recording today. Um, so we're recording from our studio in the hospital, and uh, we get to learn a lot about nursing today. So welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to kind of start off a little bit with just where are you from? Where were you born? Kind of what was your childhood like? Well, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, my childhood was wonderful. It was exciting growing up in Kentucky with the bluegrass and the fast horses. Oh, uh, <laughs> And they say Kentucky is known for pretty women, too, so. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, I went to high school at uh, Shawnee High School, and uh, some of the influences uh, was my parents, of course. My mother and father were big advocates of uh, school education. And I had a teacher in the um, fourth grade who was our pastor's wife. Okay. And uh, she, um, she kind of made me stay on the straight and narrow for education, you know, and inspired me. And as I went, uh, got older, and um, my childhood interests were um, playing um, doctor. Playing or doctor? Or playing nurse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, my, I have um, four sisters and uh, one brother, and uh, they would we'd play in the yard and stuff and uh, get, have injuries, and I'd always want to see, you know, who's bleeding or <laughs> if there were a grass cut or something, I would doctor at it, and they'd say, oh, leave me alone, you're hurting me. <laughs> you know, I'd pour <laughs> bottles of alcohol in a grass cut, so they'd scream. But, uh, Did any of your brothers and sisters follow your example? Um, I have two sisters who are medical assistants and um, since then um, you know one is uh, an executive secretary and um, of course uh, a couple of, I've lost a couple of family members but uh, my brother is now deceased and um, my sister my oldest sister so okay well, well I'm, I'm glad that you're uh, you know impromptu alcohol uh, <laughs> first aid didn't scare away them from becoming medical assistants. I know that's, that's great mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. so um did you have any inspirations in the healthcare field that kind of guided you as a child? Um, well, my best girl, my girlfriend, when I was growing up, her mother was a nurse. And she would dress in these beautiful white, snow white uniforms. And uh, back then, they wore nursing caps. And everything was white. You know, you had to wear a white uniform, the cap, and there was a stripe on the cap if you were an RN. And you had to wear white hose and uh, hard sole shoes. Goodness white gracious. Shoes. <laughs> Those must have been uncomfortable working. And it was very time. formal, very <laughs> formal. And uh, her uniform was always snow white. And she always looked like, you know, she, I don't know, I just loved that look. And uh, she was always so nice and talked about her job as a nurse. She was a surgical nurse, so she worked in the OR. So once she got to work, she would change into her scrubs, but uh, they were required to wear all white and caps at that time. Well, you know, I, I know as a child, I also wanted to be, you know, an astronaut or, a, <laughs> you know, a firefighter, specifically because of the outfits, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. yes. there's a few things better than a wonderful shiny red hat, you, yes. know, or, you know, a big coat. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, as a child in high school, 
Um, you, you said you had a teacher, you know, in the fourth grade mm -hmm. that kind of guided you and kept you on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. What subjects did you, did you focus on in high school in order to pursue a nursing career? Well, it was science. Science. Yes, <laughs> I, I was always intrigued about um, why does this do that and um, bugs. I liked, and as growing up as a little girl, I would climb trees to see. There was a tree that had... Um, a leaf with a little ball on it, you know, a little knot on it. And I was always uh, curious as to what was in that and um, why that happened, why some things look different and why did, what makes the human body function, you know. The right. mind always intrigued me. I always, I kind of wanted to be a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but, you know, I that was a long educational process, so... Um, I decided to go into the nursing, but um, I don't know. I've always been curious about why things work that way and uh, why we respond to certain things certain way and um, how the body heals and, you know. Do you find that curiosity helps you on the job now? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. um, I'm still curious, and I feel like uh, in this profession, there's something, um, you learn something new every day. You know, and you have to stay open and flexible to that uh, knowledge and getting to know how things work and what you can do to make it better. Do you, do you find that that science focus in high school, um, and this is just because I know a lot of our listeners mm -hmm. are um, younger and still going through uh -huh. school, uh -huh. do you find that you learned from that and it still helps you now, or did you learn mostly in, uh, you know, nursing school and postgraduate? Well, uh, yes because uh, that was a strong foundation for me. Um, when um, my teacher brought in uh, butterfly nets and things and showed us how to, how butterflies change from, how a caterpillar changes from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And you watch that transformation. I think that she had ordered, or one of the professors or teachers had ordered um, this butterfly net right. kind of thing where you could watch the changes or they would bring plants into the room to, and you could watch how they develop and how a green bean grows or how a potato sprouts the green leaves. And you just watch that and see the changes and what makes it live and how, do, you know, nutrition, how important that is, how water and sun and exercise and all of those things play a part into how we develop and how we uh, grow. And so you really took those lessons and got that foundation. Oh, yes. Which then has kind of served you now. So yes. stay in school, you know. <laughs> Very important. Anyway, we're going to need to take a break for now. Um, I'm Zachary Tavlin, and you're listening to Voice America Kids and Purple Songs Can Fly. Uh, during the break, we're going to play a song, I Want to Get Back Up on Top, by Emily, uh, my co-host, actually. And she wrote this when she was 13 years old. When we get back, we're going to talk with uh, Mrs. Gardner about um, her young adulthood, college education, and kind of her nursing education. Go 
Soundscape Fly on the Voice America Kids Network. I am Zachary Tablin. We're going to continue with our conversation with Miss Gardner about her uh, nursing and nursing education. So, welcome back. Uh, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit. We had talked about high school and your early life. How did that transfer into you kind of making the plunge and saying, I want to be a nurse? I am now going to pursue this educational path. I had originally, like I said, wanted to be uh, a doctor. But um, I knew that that was going to be a long educational process, and um, I was a single mother at this time, um, not right out of high school, but a couple of years from high school, and thought about nursing, and I said, oh, okay, I can do that. I want to do that, you right. know, and it'll get me into the medical field, and maybe I can go on from there to, um, for bigger and better things. So I applied uh, at Western Kentucky University in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, in Louisville, uh, out, right outside of Louisville, about an hour or so. And uh, to my surprise, they accepted me, and I was so excited. <laughs> Woo! I can go to school. So I went to school uh, at Western Kentucky University, uh, but I didn't uh, acquire my degree at that time from there. Uh, I went home and I stayed home for about a year or so, a year or two, and went back to Kentucky State University in Frankfort, Kentucky, which is the capital of um, Kentucky. Oh, okay. So um, I went to school there and acquired my associate's degree in nursing. Uh, right after that, I worked in the nursing profession for a little while, but uh, when I moved to Texas, in um, 1980, I came to Texas and uh, welcome. <laughs> thank you. I came here to visit my sister on vacation, and uh, she was. Uh, and I said, "Well, do you have a children's hospital here?" Because I worked at the children's hospital in Louisville, um, Norton Children's Hospital, and um, she said, "Yes, they have Texas Children's." And I said, oh, okay. So I said, I'm going to go see, just to look to see how the hospital is and what it looks like because Norton Children's was like a fantastic place and it was just catered to children and had all the art and everything around. So I came and I said, oh, wow, this is fantastic. You know, it was huge compared to the Children's Hospital in uh, Louisville. And uh, so I said, I'm going to apply for a job. Now this is the Friday before my flight out to go back to Louisville. Oh wow! And uh, Friday morning, so I um, filled out the application, and I turned it in. And the lady asked me, the receptionist there, she asked me to wait just a little bit, and I did. Um, it was 15, 20 minutes, and then a nurse came out and she introduced herself. Um, and she said um, she would like to interview me if I had time. And I said, sure. So we talked. And she uh, asked if I would mind another nurse coming in to talk with me. I said, no, not at all. So we, <laughs> we all started talking. Um, 
And at the end of that uh, talk, uh, they walked me around the hospital. And at that time, I think there were seven floors uh, at Texas Children's. And it was coupled with uh, the St. Luke's Hospital at that time. And so at the end of that tour of the floors of Texas Children's, they offered me a job. Wow. I said, oh, my God. I said, are you serious? I was like in awe. It must have been a wonderful impression. Yes, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were wonderful. The hospital was wonderful. It still is, but um, they did offer me a job. Uh, I accepted. And um, as a matter of fact, I said, well, I'm working in Louisville right now at the Norton Children's Hospital, and um, I wanted to get my family. I have two children, and... Um, so I wanted to get them and come back, and I needed them to hold the job for me 30 days. So they said they would. They said, we'll hold the position for you for 30 days, and uh, we'll see you then. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, then I went back home for a while, and um, for that 30 days, and prepare, as I was preparing to go, of course, I had talked with my uh, parents. Uh, my father was a Baptist minister. I was at church one Sunday, and um, I had told them that I would like to go back to um, Texas, Houston, to oh. work. So I was in the in the church, um, and everybody had gone to the basement after service one Sunday. And so I was sitting on the pew, and I said, Oh, Lord, am I making the right decision if you'll help me? to decide if this is what I really should do. And I picked up the Bible at that time and I said, um, I just kind of fanned through it and it came to a verse that said, uh, look to the heavens from which cometh your help because all of my help comes from him, from God. So I said, oh, okay. So you mean you're going to travel with me to, <laughs> to he, Houston? He is in Texas. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I knew that it was okay for me to come, and I felt confident about that, uh, about the move. So um, I gathered up all my things, which wasn't a lot. <laughs> my father uh, and mother uh, drove me down. They rode me down. And the things that I could pack in the trunk of my father's car, my two children, and $300 brought me to Houston, Texas in 1980. Um, and I stayed with my sister for 30 days once I got here. And uh, then I got my own apartment in that complex so that she could look after my children while I uh, worked here. And the transit system in Houston at that time was awful. And I didn't have a car. Yes. <laughs> but um, uh, long story short, um, the uh, transition was uh, smooth. And to get back to my education, I uh, finished, I, I wanted to pursue other, you know, a higher degree in nursing, but I owed money, of course, to, for loan, college loans and stuff like that. So once right. I paid that off, I decided I'd go back to school. So I went to Texas Southern University okay. for a, a while. We visited TSU um, many times. We've really en enjoyed being um, you know, guests there on their radio show. It's a wonderful university. Yes. Um, what, what, just briefly, um, what kinds of things did you do and did you learn about while you were in nursing school? I learned that you have to learn to handle stress. You have to learn to uh, work under pressure or under stress in the time sure. zone, you know, to manage your time well and, um, they're just, you know, just to get it together. Come in with your mind uh, on the game. When you come into, uh, when you come to work, you should be have a clear head and uh, be ready to work. Do what you come to do. And I know that all our nurses I've interacted with have that kind of mindset, mm -hmm. and it's really com comforting to any patient that's around them. Because you know, mm -hmm. at least I speak for myself. I'm all scatterbrained when I come in, you know, <laughs> and I, I, I like having that kind of support to look to. Yes. Anyway, we're going to take a break now. Uh, thank you very much for listening to us. We are uh, Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice of Mary Kids Network. And we'll be right back after these messages and this song, A Smile Can Change Anything, by Jonathan, and he was 17 years old. Show the love in your heart. It can keep you going times are hard. It can 
can show you you are and brighten your day. It can change your life in many ways. A smile can change anything when you're sad and lifts you up. It's the medicine when things are up. It's the cure when things are tough. I've seen little kids smile when things are down. I've seen them laugh instead of frown. They smile at me and I smile back. And remember the things I always had. A smile can change anything when you're sad. It lifts you up. It's the medicine when things are rough. It's the cure when things are tough. A smile can change anything when you're sad. It lifts you up. It's the medicine when things are rough. It's the cure when things are tough. Smile can change anything when you're sad and lifts you up. It's the medicine when things are rough. It's the cure when things are tough. A smile can change anything when you're sad and lifts you up. It's the medicine when things are rough. It's the cure when things are tough. Hello and welcome back to Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice America Kids Network. I am Zach Pavlin and uh, we're going to be continuing our conversation about nursing with Mrs. Gardner. So yes. thank you very much. Mm. Uh, okay, so we talked a little bit about your childhood. We talked a little bit about your education and your journey to Texas, which was very inspirational. Now I'm curious, very curious, mm. about um, what one does as a nurse. Well, could you walk us through kind of a day in the life of a nurse? What we do, um, I think, is we come to our uh, jobs um, with caring in mind. I think that nursing is a profession that um, you can't leave that out. You can't leave the caring and sharing of yourself um, and giving of yourself to your patients so that, um, because we have a short time to interact and for them to trust us. Uh, to get the patient to trust you is like uh, what you want to do because right. you want to be able to have them communicate to you what's going on with them and uh, the turnover of patient to nurse is kind of, it's rapid. It's uh, um, Sometimes patients are in the hospital overnight, sometimes uh, they have weeks or months of stay or in the outpatient setting you have to get to know them very quickly and they have to get to know you just as quickly. So you have to have yourself uh, open to that, leave yourself open to that because uh, a new patient is fearful of what's going on. They don't know what's happening to them, what's happening to their body, uh, what, and the family is, they're, they're like, I don't know what's going on with my child. I don't want him to be sick, you know, and you just have to build a trusting rapport with your families. Um, let them know that you're here to help and uh, that um, you care about how, what happens to them and how they get better. And we're going to try to make the um, treatments or uh, whatever they're there for as painless as possible. And uh, you have to be um, upfront. There's no such thing, uh, part of nursing, nursing ethics is that, you know, we have to be honest and um, forthright with our patients. And um, so you can't say, oh, this won't hurt a bit. And you know <laughs> it's going to be a painful event. Um, so a lot of times uh, for the younger children who won't understand that, we have to communicate that fact to the uh, parents, to the mother or to the father, 
uh, let them know uh, what activities will take place so they can kind of help us along the way. Mm -hmm. And we have many services here in the hospital that help us to do that. We have Child Life and um, Purple Songs um, and, and things that help us to do our job. But I think the main part of nursing is uh, caring and being open to uh, medical science, learning what you can learn about the job that you do. Um, education, again, is very important, whether it's a formal education or the nurse needing to review something uh, on her own. You know, um, what is this disease? And, you know, what do the, what's in the books about it? So you have to... Um, stay open to education and learning. And, and kind of stay up to date with those Yes, things. of course. Yeah, I, I can say from personal experience, when I first came here, I was a textbook horrified 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was really um, the first thing that kind of opened me up was um, nursing staff and volunteer staff um, because I was just in the corner of my Game Boy. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to talk to I was horrified, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to get my blood taken. And my biggest fears before I came here were uh, blood and needles, which mm -hmm. is uh, horrible when you have a uh, blood disorder you need to get tested on. Yes. But uh, the nursing staff really made an effort to make me feel comfortable. And, yes. you know, they taught me a way that I could uh, anticipate it without flinching and so they could do their mm -hmm. job and I could, you know, not be, like, caught unguarded by pain. And mm -hmm. um, they really helped me through that. Yes. How would you say you facilitate that kind of, interaction between yourself and the patient and, and you make yourself open for them? Well, um, sometimes I would, um, of course you always have to introduce yourself and a smile is so very important um, because, uh, and that's important when you're working with the public or with the people in general anywhere. Um, if you're give, offering a service uh, to someone, you don't want to take um, if you go to McDonald's and you order a, a Big Mac and when you walk in, uh, the person says, what do you want? You know, why are you here? Right. Or, uh, you know, like, I don't really want to be here, but okay, if you want a hamburger, what kind? Uh, you would rather say, uh, have them say to you, welcome to uh, McDonald's. Um, uh, how can I help you? What could I get for you today? Right. You know, you want that to come with a smile, a, a pleasant tone, because your body language plays a big part of that. Um, you want to alleviate fear from your approach to the children, so uh, you get down on their level, of course, and, uh, <laughs> you know, because you look like a giant compared to some of the children, and you kind of give them an um, uh, idea of what you're going to do and how they can help through that. You know, some things they have decisions on, whether uh, they want to use the right arm or the left arm, if you're going to draw blood, or um, if they need their mommy there, or uh, if the child life uh, specialist uh, would help out, and they'll come in for distraction, and just to give them what they need to get have, help them get through that particular situation. Um, and you have to kind of read people where... Um, that comes in, you know, you have to say, oh, mm, is uh, act, and then you say, okay, after we finish this, we're going to let you get to the uh, toy box, mm. you know, and pick out a toy, you know, as a reward, and um, as the older children, sometimes uh, older kids uh, are harder to get to know, you know, harder, really? for, yes, because they're like, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> I already know what's going to happen, and I know it hurts, so don't try to tell me it's not going to hurt. So uh, we're not going to say that, but we we do say that this is something that has to be done. So this is one of those things you don't have a choice in. We're going to we have to do this procedure. But. And I want to continue uh, this conversation about uh, kind of the, the role of nursing and the, the rewards that you get from nursing um, after we get back from the break. So we're going to uh, end this segment with a song by Cameron, uh, The Kind Side of the Nurse, uh, who wrote this when he was nine years old. Been coming here since August, and the nurses are real nice. They shine like the sun, they make my fears run. Needles don't hurt, they hold me and they hug me. I've been coming here since August, and the nurses are real nice. Nurses here are butterflies, they flit and fly around. They're beautiful, phenomenal, they lift me off the ground. When I'm tired, they make me smile. 
say we know you're here a while. They always say sit down and stay, we'll help you find the way. The news is here about They flit and fly around. They're beautiful, phenomenal. They lift me off the ground. Welcome back to Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice America Kids Network. I am your host, Zachary Taplin, and today we're going to kind of conclude our conversation with uh, Mrs. Gardner about being a nurse. So, I, gosh, hearing the story of, of all that goes into being a nurse, and everything that you think about on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm curious what the what the most rewarding process or the most rewarding uh, aspect of your job is to you. I think it is to um, have the children return with uh, big smiles, searching for the nurse that uh, you know helped them get through the uh, time of uh, sickness, of uh, helping them to heal through uh, their treatment. Um, and seeing their smiling faces, seeing them off to college like yourself, yes. uh, you know, venturing out, doing the things that uh, they want to do for their lives, you know, making their lives what they want it to be. We help them get from that point of um, illness or being sick to being well and wanting to go on and move on. Children are very resilient. They uh, bounce back. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm in pediatrics is because they don't linger in sickness. If they're sick, uh, you know it because they're not doing the things that children do. They're not playing, they're not eating, they're not, you know, uh, causing havoc. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, when they come back with uh, smiles and bright eyes and um, wonderful songs and testimonies of of their life and just being happy doing their thing. Uh, my patients have come back as teachers, they've come back as artists, um, they've uh, had their music, you know, right. they, uh, pursuing their careers, getting about life, getting about doing the things. Part of what we do is uh, we want um, to heal the children or get them better so that they can live, you know, not just survive. We want them to live and just be happy in doing what they do. And really thrive in that. Yes, right. and thrive in that. It's rewarding to see them go on and seek the things that they were meant to do. And what would you say, um, as a nurse, I'm mostly speaking of this, um, in relation to people that are maybe thinking about being a nurse, is um, what, what would you say the most challenging aspect of your job is? Um, I think the most challenging part is um, the emotional um, part of it, where you get um, attached to the children, and not all of what I do is successful. Mm -hmm. You know, not all of everything about nursing is successful. We do lose. Uh, children on occasion and that is the hardest part um, knowing that you know you build rapports with children you get to know them they get to know you they hunt for you when they come oh is nurse Pat here or is nurse Mindy or nurse whatever is she here and uh, you're just excited to see them they give you hugs and just make you feel better if you come in down the kids have a smile and like I said if they're feeling good they're feeling good <laughs> you know and they want right. to hurry up and get done what they need to get done and get home because they don't want to hang out in this place but um, that's the tough part I can imagine mm -hmm. really difficult but uh, the flip side of that is if you are a person who cares about other people um, and you want to do your part I think that that's the 
main thing is caring. It's not so much, you know, and I tell uh, young women and men who want men, you know, <laughs> that's the right. thing. When I first started nursing, there weren't that many male nurses, but now the uh, field has opened up, you know, and it, nursing used to be a profession that was um, designated for women, but now there's a lot of men in uh, nursing which is the change and that's great uh, but if you're interested in nursing it's it's about caring and it's about doing and giving to others um, and if you don't have that and you have to work on Saturdays, Sundays, Christmas, Easter, New Year's, your birthday um, your best friend's quinceanera or you know whatever's going on uh, the hospital doesn't close it's open 24 hours a day it's mm -hmm. not just a profession to make a dollar or to think you're going to get rich or meet a physician <laughs> or whatever, you, you know. <laughs> but um, My dream is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But, um, you know, it, it is about what you want to give, what you want to make it, how, you know, caring about others. Well, what would you say um, if you give one piece of advice to an aspiring nurse? Um, what would you tell them to focus on now? Um, to help make that possible for them? Um, getting an education, register for a, a, a nursing school. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, um, pursue the sciences. And uh, because there's so many specialties in nursing, you know, it's a broad, uh, it's an, a wide open field where we need good nurses. So it's really the, the invest in the education now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just really quickly before we uh, have to go, um, what impact have you seen the arts and medicine uh, program and uh, Purple Songs Can Fly make um, on the patients that you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, when they leave the Purple Songs Can Fly, they, their chests are sticking out and they have these words and or, or, or a CD or a disc with uh, their song, their voice, and they want us to hear it. Oh, have you? did you hear? No, and they play their songs for us or they'll give us, and it is very very enlightening very it makes you um, a joy it gives you joy internal joy I feel happy when they're happy you know <laughs> they come out and they're they're really happy oh I made a song I wrote a song you know I said well you're gonna be a star <laughs> <laughs> you know and right, you are a star right. in, in um, the purple songs uh, but um, that is, and art they uh, they are exposed to, to um, dance to other, you know, musicians and um, arts and crafts. I have a collection of uh, watercolors that I don't. If you looked at the picture, you wouldn't know what it was, and I don't know what it is either. <laughs> but I know that uh, little Bobby or little Johnny made this uh, painting for me, and they were so proud to offer it to me, uh, to give it to me, and um, or a bracelet. You know, they make necklaces and bracelets, and we're excited to. I have a collection of those things that, you know, I look back and it brings joy to me to, uh, to see it. So, I, I, I think that really emphasizes kind of the, the role of arts in the kind of holistic care mm -hmm. of the children, oh, and they yes. can get out that and yes. those emotions and kind of put mm -hmm. them on something. Yeah. Expression of uh, how they're feeling. Yeah, exactly. Their feelings. Well, I, w I really want to thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much for opening up about your profession and life with us mm -hmm. and uh, being here in the studio with us today. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for listening. Uh, and we'll see you next time on Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice of Mary Kids Network. I am your host, Zachary Tablin, and we're going to end today with a song, God Can Move Mountains by Nikki, and she was 12 when she wrote this.
Thanks for listening to Purple Songs Can Fly. We'll see you again next Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Kids channel. And remember, for more information about the Purple Songs Can Fly project, visit www.purplesongscanfly.org. We'll be back with more music next week. Purple Songs Can Fly.